I hate thinking of something twice if I don't need to think about it but once. I hate having to look for something that I could very easily organize it so I know where it is. I hate being distracted by anything when I'm trying to focus on what I'm focused on. You know, I discovered how you can quiet your mind in some fairly simple ways. So you can call that lazy if you want or efficient. Herzlich willkommen, David Allen. Thanks for the invitation, Frederick. Glad to be here. And, and I must say, and, and I want to really start with a thank you first. When I was an entrepreneur about 15, 20 years ago, I stumbled upon your book, Getting Things Done. And I was in a situation where my email inbox was overflowing. I, I didn't really know how to prioritize, how to organize my day. And I came along the method that you created, that you put in a book that became a worldwide best-selling book. Translated, it feels like it's been translated in more languages than there are in the world. So kind of everywhere your book is. So uh, first of all, we live in times where it's getting quicker, where it's getting more complex. We have that uncertainty around Corona. How do you look on the topic of productivity at the moment? Well, it just becomes that much more important to stay clear and focused and focused on the meaningful stuff. So that's why actually GTD, the Getting Things Done methodology, has gotten more and more popular simply because the population that needs it has, has expanded quite a bit, given all the changes that are going on. Yeah. So if you, if you say the word focus, what does focus actually mean for you? How would you recognize somebody who is focused over a day? They're not distracted. Mm -hmm. So that means... The, their attention is where they want their attention and it's not being pulled off somewhere else. So they're focused on what they want to focus on or their, their, their attention and their tension is exactly where they want it. That's, mm -hmm. that's highly focused. So that is about staying in control of where your attention is going despite all the distractions that we have in the world at the moment. And, and by the way too, Frederick, focus, sometimes people think that productivity and focus means work harder or have, you know, It's not, if you sit down to just meditate or be contemplative, that's a focus. If you're cooking spaghetti and that's all that's on your mind, you're focused. So focus is not about being hard. Sometimes it is. Sometimes you, you have to really work to stay focused on, you know, something that needs a lot of intense focus. But uh, that's only a very small part of your day. So you are quoted by saying you are one of the laziest person in the world. And, and uh, th this relates to that topic of how do you organize yourself and does focus really always mean productivity? So as the laziest person in the world, how do you come across creating with getting things done one of the most far-reached methods in that area? Well, you know, come on. I, you could translate efficient to lazy. Yeah. Right? I, I hate thinking of something twice if I don't need to think about it but once. I hate having to look for something that I, I could very easily organize it so I know where it is. I hate uh, being distracted by anything uh, when I'm trying to focus on what I'm focused on. So I guess you could say that's lazy. Uh, most people are, even if they look like they're working hard, they have a whole lot of stuff going on in their mind that is not necessary. And, you know, I discovered how you can quiet your mind, uh, you know, in some fairly simple ways. You're not born doing it. So you actually have to learn the behaviors, as you know, if you've got experience with my stuff. There are certain behaviors that you, ha that you actually have to employ, but they're not hard. It's not like a foreign language or some new technology. It's actually easy to do. Everybody actually does these behaviors to some degree. Very few people do them consistently. And they, yeah. what happens is it all backs up into their head and they're trying to use their head as their office and your head's a crappy office. So I just figured out how to quiet your mind. Uh, so you can call that lazy if you want or efficient. Yeah, so it's, it's not about like, like a ping pong ball bouncing around between all the distractions and feeling busy, but it's about getting your focus to where you want to have it and it's about calming your mind. So how do we get that done? There's, there's, some, you know, there's some simple steps. First of all, you need to get anything that has your attention out of your head. Write it down, record it, get it somewhere, get it out of your head. Because it, if it's only in your head, it's spinning 24-7 in there, subliminally anyway. That place has no sense of past or future. So everything you tell yourself you would, could, should, need, might want to do something different about, 
is spinning in there unless you've externalized it. Now, externalize it, write it down. You know, come on, just do pen and paper, nothing better, you know, and get it out of your head that way. But just that won't totally do it. You have to then decide once you've written something down, should we get divorced? Should I hire a vice president? We need cat food. Uh, you know, I need to research a new mobile phone service. All that stuff. And most people have a lot more of that than they realize. I spent thousands of hours with some of the best and brightest on the planet having them unload all that stuff. It is huge for most people. And once you get that out of your head, though, uh, then you need to make some decisions about what you're going to do about what you wrote down, if anything. You know, if you take meeting notes, you know, a lot of those notes you don't need anymore. You could throw them away. Some of those notes you might want to save as reference. But some of those notes may represent something you need to do, some commitment that you've got to finalize or complete or you know, some project you had. And if it is an actionable item, there's at least a next action that you need to decide about it. And outcomes and actions are not on most people's to-do list. Most people's to-do list, if they have one at all, is, is a capture function. Uh, but most people's to-do list are still incomplete lists of still unclear stuff. And they can create as much stress as they relieve because they look at it and you go, oh, what am I going to do about mom's birthday? What am I going to do about the vice president? What are we going to do about yeah. adopting? You know, so they haven't finished their thinking about the things that have their attention. So mm -hmm. I just discovered the algorithm or the formula about how do you finish the thinking about the stuff that has your attention? That's step two, clarify. Step three would be to organize those reminders. If you can't finish them in the moment and, and you know, within two minutes, then you need to then park the, those reminders somewhere that you trust you'll see at the right time. That's step three is organize. So, you know, some sort of a list manager you need just to keep track of the errands you need to run, the stuff you need to talk to your life partner about, the things you need to surf the web about, et cetera. And so keeping track of all that externally in an external brain is critical to keep your head clear. And then step four is to make sure you're looking at the right list at the right time. You're going out to do errands. Look at your errands list. You know, you're going to talk to your partner about, you know, business stuff. You need to look at your agenda list that you've come up with, you know, in the meantime with your partner. And that's the reflect process. And reflect can take a lot of different levels. It could be reflect on your life purpose, reflect on the strategy of your business, reflect on your goals and objectives, reflect on your job description, <laughs> you know, reflect on all the projects you've got. So it's really about being able to analyze or to put, locate yourself in space and time against all of your agreements with yourself at multiple levels. And so that can, you know, that, that's a pretty sophisticated uh, kind of a behavior set is reflecting on all that. And then if you do that, all that consistently, you've captured what has your attention, you've clarified it, you've organized it, and you step back and reflect it on the appropriate stuff. Then step five is engage. How do I now, where do I put my focus and my activity? See, if you've done step one through four, <laughs> it'll be a trusted choice. It may not still be the best choice, but it'd be, you'll at least feel confidence the best you could make in the moment, given everything you see you know, and, and there. But most people are making decisions about where to put their attention based upon latest and loudest. They're in the busy trap, right? And so th th what this does is it helps clear the deck. It helps get you, get you much better overview and a map of your world that you need to look at and see and keep you, you know, at the helm instead of being run over, you know, by, by what's going on. Now that's, I just said a lot, <laughs> but yeah, awesome. that's, yeah. that's it. We're having that setting where we have all, all the different thoughts and distractions and emails and everything coming in. And, and now it's really about getting it somewhere on paper, reflect on it and organizing it. So one typical thing and, and one problem here that many people and, and that I also faced is that you need to take time in order to sit down, write it down and organize and reflect. And you are so busy that you typically don't do that. So what are your top tips for taking yourself the time and allowing you to sit down and really do it? So what brings us in the process? Well, just you, make, you need to make sure that you have at least an hour of free time during the day. If you let yourself get booked wall to wall, and I, that happens from time to time, but that puts me behind an hour in terms of my processing stuff. But it takes that kind of time to deal with incoming, to decide what it means, organize it appropriately. Uh, and, you know, if, if you're just getting so busy, all that stuff is piling up, you've got a huge backlog. And the bigger your backlog, the more any kind of interruption, or any kind of new thing you don't expect is going to piss you off. So that's why when I'm not doing anything else, I'm, clear, I'm clearing the deck 
because there's something coming toward me I can't see. And I want to be able to be as clear as I can against whether to do that or not or work on something else. So right. to, to stay clear, I have to spend the time to do that. You do. And not only, you know, you know, probably an hour a day, and you could do that early day. I've got I've coached a lot of executives that start to build in the first hour, no meetings, so that they can catch up and are a lot clearer and cleaner during the day when the madness sort of comes at them. Right. They can be more on, on the on top of their game instead of feeling driven, driven by it. And then at least once a week, you need at least one to two hours to do what I call the weekly review. Once a week, you need to step back, lift up, look at the horizon, you know, from a from a higher perspective uh, and catch up. And that's a very creative process you just yeah. just to do that. You know, I know if you've done it, you know, if you've done my stuff, Frederick, and you, you the weekly review is, is magic. Uh, and Definitely. it's not just a static. It's not just a static process. It's actually a, an executive function to sit there and think about your stuff because a lot of stuff happens during the week. Then you need to bring up the rear guard and catch up to make sure that your lists are current to make sure that you don't have stuff spinning that doesn't need to spin anymore. Definitely, and and that that may that means making a clear choice of having that time slot in your calendar. And, and for me, and, and that is what I also learned from, from all your writings, is to make a clear decision that this is an important step and this is value you create as you sit there. Just the feeling of being busy isn't productive. It's the time that you allow to organize the stuff and deciding on what is important. So what are your tips? And, and by the way, Frederick, that is productive. If you're a knowledge worker, which means you actually have to think to figure out what to do, as opposed to having it obvious in front of you all the time, I got to think what to do today, this morning, what to do with these 14 emails. When you have to think, thinking and making these decisions is your job. I mean, this is not aside from the work that you need to do. It's the work you need to do. The late, great Peter Drucker would tell everybody, you know, look, your biggest, one of your biggest jobs as a knowledge worker is defining what your work is. And that's what this process does. So you have been working with so many leaders, entrepreneurs, and top managers. And sometimes they need you as a coach to realize what they need to change. So what are the biggest levers and steps for you to convince them to take time out, to reflect, to organize, to prioritize? You know, if there was a magic pill, that would be great. that I could give them, they would do that. Uh, what you really have to do is start to change your internal standards about how clear you want to feel all the time, right? So the reason most people don't fully implement this methodology on a consistent basis is their addiction to stress. Hmm. Not, not like they have to go shoot up stress, but their willingness to tolerate the, the stress that not doing this produces. So you, what you have to do is raise your, raise your own internal standard to how clear you want to be comfortable feeling. And most people allow themselves this sort of gnawing sense of anxiety, you know, and, and it, it's, it's, not so, it, it's, it's not so much that they're feeling so overwhelmed, it's that they're willing to tolerate that sort of, that sort of ambient stress, if you will, hmm. the stuff that wakes them up at three o'clock in the morning, oh, I forgot, or I should, or what do I do yeah. about, or, or all of that. So uh, that, that, if you start to feel uncomfortable with that, you have to do this. <laughs> There's no way to stop yeah. it without doing this. Yeah. So a lot of it has to do with how much experience, how, how willing are they to engage with the, with the process? Mm. So, you know, the, it, you, can, you can understand that getting things done methodology and just to, you know, you know, I just explained it in a couple of minutes. Uh, if you got a, one of our coaches, you know, certified coaches that could walk you through this, in a couple of days, you would really, you know, pretty much have this game set up. Yeah. And then probably a couple of weeks, some of this is going to be, you know, more habitual. A couple of months, maybe even a little more of it. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Frederick, but it, it could take a couple of years until this is so habitual, you don't even think about it. You just do it. Yes. And some people so get probably. it right away. Some people yeah. read the book and go, ah, I'm on, because they were close <laughs> to doing this already. They just needed a few yeah. pieces to put together on it. Yeah, perfect. And, and this is a great example how coaching can help you to get to where you actually want to be and not to where you think you should stay. So this is a, a great example. And maybe as a last thing, if, if somebody listens to that interview now and goes like, yeah, maybe that's me. Maybe, maybe I'm addicted to being busy. M maybe, maybe I'm stuck in that. What would be your top tip for the closing of that interview 
to engage in? What could somebody who's realizing that do at the moment now? Well, it doesn't take you but a, a few minutes to experience what this methodology can do for you. You know, just take uh, two minutes and first of all, get a pen and paper and write down the top 10 things that have your attention. And then take the next minute or two and decide the very next action step you would need to take on each one of those to get closure on it and watch how different you'll feel. It doesn't take very long for you to engage with this and, and get the golden goodies out of it, more control, more focus, more clarity. Everybody's you know, listening or watching this at some point then felt overwhelmed or confused and made a list and felt better. The world didn't yeah. change. What changed was how they are engaged with their world. So the big tip is just start engaging with these simple best practices. Yeah. Write stuff down that got attention on, decide a next action on it, park that in some sort of a trusted list you'll see at the right time. I mean, those are the simple three basic things. And it doesn't take long to start to do that. Once you start to do that, then you get, ooh, what else could I do? Oh, wow, I'm starting to yeah. feel better and more in control. Ooh, let me read the book again. Or let me yes. listen to this guy again and whatever and see what, what awesome. might be next. Yeah. So there we have the concrete tip for you. So in the next break, just take a pen and paper and, and follow the basic idea. Take action and do something. And here we have the tips from one of the best in the area of productivity and self-management. And it's actually about focus. So David Allen, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure talking to you. Goodbye. My pleasure. My pleasure, Frederick. Yeah, ciao.